All right, let's dive into a really interesting and maybe a little controversial take on the whole AI revolution. We're asking the question, is ChatGBT really the future or could it be one of Silicon Valley's biggest blunders? We're going to break down this argument that says the AI hype train might just be running out of steam. Right out of the gate, the source material we're looking at drops this bomb of a quote. It's basically calling out the whole super intelligence is just around the corner narrative and asking, is this all just a big distraction? A smokescreen to hide the fact that real progress has ground to a halt? It's a huge claim, so let's see how we get there. First off, we have to admit it. The first time you used ChatGPT, it felt like magic, right? It was revolutionary. It felt like you were talking to an actual thinking being. But the argument we're exploring today says that feeling is a brilliantly designed illusion. To really get this argument, you have to kind of forget the term artificial intelligence for a second. The author, Remy, says we should think of these things, these LLMs, as incredibly powerful translation systems. That's it. They translate from French to English. They translate a super complex document into a simple summary. They can even translate your idea for an app into actual code. They aren't thinking. They're just translating. And this leads to such a critical point. Putting this translation tool inside a chat window was a stroke of absolute marketing genius. It makes it feel like a person. But as a way to actually use the technology, the author says it's just terrible. Why? Because the second you start pushing it for deep knowledge or complex reasoning, the whole thing just falls apart. The illusion shatters. So that weakness brings us to the first major pillar of this whole argument, the idea that the incredible exponential progress we all saw has basically hit a brick wall. And there's a fantastic name for this, the capacitor effect. It's kind of like charging your phone, you know? It zips up to 80% really, really fast, but that last 20% takes forever. The argument here is that training LLMs is the exact same. In the beginning, you feed it data and you get these massive jumps in capability. But as the model gets full, every new piece of information you add gives you a smaller and smaller return. To make it even simpler, think about it like this. You've got an empty bar. The first electrons, or pieces of data, can get in super easily. Then the bar starts to get crowded. It gets a lot harder for new electrons to find a spot. And finally, the bar is completely packed. Sure, you might be able to shove one more person in, but it's gonna take a massive effort for almost no gain. And that, the source claims, is where we are with AI training right now. And hey, this isn't just a fun theory. The data seems to back it up. This chart, it shows that for the past year or so, the performance gains have really slowed down to a crawl. The curve is flattening out. The author suggests that any tiny improvements we see lately are just from the models teaching to the test. Basically, they're not getting smarter. They're just getting better at the benchmark tests themselves. So this begs the million dollar question, doesn't it? If the technology itself has hit a plateau, why on earth is the hype, the investment, the noise, why is it all louder than it's ever been? Well, according to this argument, the answer has nothing to do with tech anymore. It's all about business. It's about money. We've entered what the author calls the billion dollar circus. And this is where the disconnect gets just wild. This chart shows what AI models businesses are actually using. And OpenAI, the company that is the face of this entire industry, has just a tiny little sliver of the market. Just over 6%. They are absolutely dwarfed by their competitors. It suggests that their fame in the news has almost nothing to do with how much they're actually being used in the real world. And yet, the money is just insane. The fight for talent is so crazy that top AI engineers are supposedly getting sign-on bonuses of over a hundred million dollars. I mean, come on, that isn't a stable industry. That is a frenzy. So the whole argument boils down to this. It's not about the technology anymore. It's about the story, the narrative. The promise of artificial general intelligence, or AGI, has to be kept alive. Not because it's close, but because that's the only thing that can justify these crazy astronomical investments. The story is what's keeping the whole circus going. So let's talk about the practical side. 
what about us? We hear nonstop that AI is creating this huge productivity boom, but is that actually happening? The author does this quick back of the napkin calculation for software developers, supposedly AI's number one use case. So developers spend about 44% of their time actually coding. Let's be generous and say AI gives them a 30% boost on about half of that work. You do the math and you get a total time savings of 7%. 7%. I mean, is that something? Yeah, sure. Is it a world-changing revolution? The author argues, not so much. And this gap between the hype and reality gets even weirder when you look at where people are actually spending their money on AI. The prediction was, you know, it's going to replace writers, accountants, all these white-collar jobs. The reality? The top paid use is that coding assistance we just saw. Has a pretty limited impact. And number two? Get ready for this. AI companionship. Role-playing bots not quite the economic revolution we were all promised. So after tearing all of this down, is the author just saying AI is useless? No, not at all. The argument is that we're just looking at it completely the wrong way. The real revolution isn't gonna be some big bang. It's gonna be a much slower, quieter, maybe 10 year transformation. Let's just look at history for a second. The web was invented way back in 1989, but it took until 2004 a full 15 years for game-changing apps like Gmail to show up and really change our daily lives. The source suggests Gen AI is on that same exact timeline. The real Gen AI 2.0, the moment it truly changes everything, is probably still another decade away. So what does that real revolution actually look like? Well, it's not about replacing people. It's about seamlessly augmenting them. Think about what a universal translator could really do. For a blind person, it could be a constant audio description of the world. For a deaf person, real-time subtitles for any conversation. It could help someone with autism translate confusing social cues. Or help someone with ADHD by buffering a conversation and remembering the important details. That's the real promise. AI as this invisible, essential layer that helps us all connect better with the world. The author wraps this all up with a final and I think really beautiful analogy. He says we need to stop treating AI like this endless jar of jam that we can just eat by the spoonful. That first big sugar rush, it's over. Instead, we should see it for what it is, a very powerful, very special ingredient. Something you spread wisely on some toast to make the whole thing better. It's a call to shift our focus away from the hype and towards actual usefulness. And that really leaves us with the final question, doesn't it? Is AI a feast we need to devour right now? Or is it an ingredient that we need to learn to use wisely? Because the path we choose is gonna make all the difference.